G'day guys, M Tin Tam here. Um, it's been a long break for me. I'm having to move houses um, along with other personal things, but um, I finally have some free time to myself, to which I can now make about I don't know three tutorials. This one is going to be the new render passes that the Octane Development Crew has recently implemented. It is called Deep Channel Kernel. Now, what this kernel does is that it can render out passes such as ge geometric normal passes, shading normals, position, Z depth, material ID, texture coordinates, and tangent vector. I'll be going through each of the each each um, through all these passes, and I'll show you all the uh, you know all the um, options and sliders that goes with it. Um, there are also a few which I'll be going in depth in because they're the ones I mostly use and how you can benefit benefit it from. So here I have a simple scene of just some standard, you know, um, circles um, and everything. It looks pretty good. That's some depth of field, some textures and everything, some colors. Um, but what if I want to get a normal pass. What if I wanted to uh, get out some other uh, options from these, uh, from this rendering data? So the first thing is the geometric, geometric normals. Um, to, what the, uh, to what this can be used for is for, um, to what I did, there was this uh, wall and it had a lot of polygons onto it. Um, and I, my GPU just couldn't handle all these, uh, all this extra video RAM. So what I did was I rendered this uh, brick wall separate. I then got the geometric normals from it, and I then placed that normal onto a texture, um, and it pretty much gave the uh, texturing and the bump mapping um, without all that extra polygons. And this is what can be used for for yours. So as you can see, it's uh, very fast, very fluent. All the colors are there, and it's very useful. Here we have the standard max samples. How long we want the render to last for? Um, since it's going, since it's going through 174 megabits per second, I recommend putting it all the way up to 64,000. There is also the filter size, uh, the Z depth ma max, alpha channeling for, you know, getting rid of all the uh, background uh, color, ray epsilon, and UV max. Mess around with these settings. Um, I'm just using standard colors. It could work with uh, other textures, other um, other more high detailed polygons. But this is just a simple um, simple scene um, for a very simple tutorial. Next is the shading normals. It's virtually this pretty much the same, um, but uh, once again, um, if you have texturing, high polygons, or really extensive environments. Um, it could benefit your scene very much. So, uh, next is the positioning. This is a uh, very useful for if you want to um, use like a point cloud or get um, the uh, the position coordinates of your meshes. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of um, scripts out there that could benefit that you could benefit from. I saw some of this uh, um, some of this stuff on the um, uh, District Nine. Um, how they use it in Nuke and everything, so you can render out like a um, going around and get the positioning pass and try and have the same 3D uh, look, however, it's still all 2D and you have the same options as well. Next is the Z depth, I've used this a lot. Um, the Z depth is pretty much the depth of field um, pass. Uh, most companies don't like doing it all in one render, so they'll get out a Z depth uh, um, pass and they can merge it in. So, right now, if all this would be here, all this would be all blurred, all the black would stay in picture. And
around you can change this up and down so that will be blurred and all about will be not blurred very useful definitely very useful I use this a lot um, where when the uh, normal depth of field um, is very locked so I want to have like a certain uh, control over the scene and this pass will definitely benefit me a lot. Uh, next is a material ID. This is useful when um, I want to uh, composite a certain area. Um, it helps with masking. Um, it, it, it puts the masking and the color keying to rest. Let's just say that I did a 360 turnaround. I only wanted to change this color. All I have to do is um, match it out, match all the rest of the colors, and I only have this sp specific color. Um, and change the uh, blending options and you can change pretty much that only texture there it will only affect that ball it's extremely useful it actually saved one of my uh, school projects I thought oh great I have to mask all this out or I have to try and do some color keying with masking but I thought you know what maybe I could test this out and it's helped me out a lot Um, next is the texture coordinates. Um, texture coordinates, uh, since I'm using a simple scene with only standard based textures, it's not really helping me a lot. I'm pretty sure with your um, more highly detailed scene, the, the texture coordinates will be of more use for you, especially with the high foliage scenes and such. Next is the texture um, tangent vector. Um, as you can see, it's has certain properties and colors toward to your scene again since I'm using a very simplified scene um, it's not really I can't really use it to, to the best of I uh, to uh, to what I can however with a little bit of research to what your certain project is I'm pretty sure this pass will come up of use for you as it has definitely helped some other of my friends. So that's pretty much all the um, shading passes that you can uh, try and browse through. Um, I will definitely be using the geometric and Z depth pass for sure. Um, it will definitely help in compositing visual with visual effects and such. Um, there's no shadow passes um, as of yet. Apparently, it's a bit hard to program on the GPU. Can't wait for the shadow passing to come out. But um, uh, yeah, with a lot of trial and error, I'm pretty sure these passes will become of use. Um, thanks uh, for this tutorial, and uh, the next one will be the full off node.